Okay, so we got five tracks, we have five audio clips. Everything is in the same horizontal row, and a horizontal row is called a scene. And again, that's gonna be significant relatively soon. But before we get to that, if I stop all these clips, all right, there's a button over here. If we go to the master tr uh, track, and I hover my mouse down here, there is a square. This square is a stop button, and this will stop all the clips that are set to play. So I'm gonna hit that. And we've talked about the clip launch quantization, which is over here. Set to one bar, so that means that every single bar is gonna wait till the beginning of the next bar for whatever clip that I've launched to start playing. So if I was to play my drums, when I launch the effect sound, it's gonna wait till the beginning of the next bar. Same thing here. Now, let's say that maybe there's a clip that I wanna play more often than every bar. If I was to change this, this is gonna affect the clip launch quantization of every single clip that I have here. So let's see why this might not be the best idea. Maybe I'll change this to eighth notes because maybe there's a sound that I wanna be able to play every eighth note. I'll stop all my clips again. The first clip is gonna start at the beginning of the first bar because I haven't started my transport yet. Once I launch this clip, my global transport will start going. All right. But now this is set to eighth note. So that means that when I launch a clip, it's gonna start on the very next eighth note. It's not gonna wait to the beginning of the next bar. And this can cause problems because it can make certain things start playing off beat. All right, let me go ahead and bring in my percussion. Now with the percussion sample, it's actually kind of cool to be able to do that. But I don't necessarily want to be able to do that with the melodic sample. I'm gonna throw the rhythm of that off. And with most drum loops and things like that, I don't want to be able to start at every eighth note. It's a lot better to have it wait till the beginning of the next bar, so I make sure that everything is in sync. So what happens if you only have one or two clips that you want to be able to launch more often than every bar? If we go back down to, let me actually select the percussion clip because this is the one that I want to affect. If we select the clip that we want to uh, change the clip launch quantization of, and we go down here by the clip properties, there's actually more clip properties that we're not currently seeing. If we look down here, there's three buttons and these buttons will show and hide different aspects of the clip properties. This button is an L and L stands for launch. So this has different clip launch properties. Let's go ahead and click that. So clip launch quantization up here, this affects every single clip in our project. Down here in the launch window, we have the launch mode and then we have quantization. The quantization here is gonna affect the individual clip. Now, when the quantization is set to global, that means the clip launch quantization for this particular clip will adhere to whatever this the global clip launch quantization is set to. Now, it doesn't have to adhere to that. This clip can have its very own clip launch quantization if that's what we desire. And in this case, that's what I wanna do. So I can change this so that only this clip can be launched every eighth note. Well, all the other clips have to wait a full bar before they start. So again, let me stop all the clips. I'll launch the first clip. My second clip. I launch now, it's gonna wait to the beginning of the next bar. But if I go to my percussion clip, if I launch it right now, and if we look at it, you can see that I'm able to freely launch this every eighth note. If I want to, I could change this so I can launch it every 16th note. Now, if your timing is really, really good, you can use this to your advantage because you're able to play this more freely, play it more like you're playing it live, but it's still gonna be quantized. It's still gonna launch every 16th note or every eighth note, but you can just play it more often than just playing it every bar. This is especially helpful if you end up MIDI mapping this clip to a button on a MIDI controller or to a key on your computer keyboard, which we'll get to later. 
But it's just good to know that you have this as an option because sometimes there's certain sound effects you want to bring in. Uh, there's the ever-present air horn that people have been using and abusing for years and years and years. Typically, that gets triggered multiple times. And if you wanted to do that, thank you for my lovely air horn impression. Uh, <laughs> I'll be here every Tuesday. No, but uh, if you want to be able to trigger a one-shot sample like that as a clip, you could bring that in. And I think... I'm not gonna bring in an air horn, but I do have some one-shot samples in here, I believe. Uh, let me see. In here, percussion top loops, effects loops. Let me see if I have something worthy. Well, maybe Tech House. Here we go, vocal loop. It was about midnight. Oh my goodness. <laughs> We used to joke around with this sample all the time in class, and uh, this guy's voice is really annoying. But it'll definitely serve the purpose of giving us something that we can trigger multiple times uh, at a much quicker launch quantization than one bar. I don't want this clip to loop. All right, let's go ahead and play this so you hear what we're working with. Let me turn this down. It was about midnight. It was midnight when it all broke down. Something happened. Now... I don't want all that material, okay? And I don't want this to loop. So I'm gonna turn loop off. And I don't even really need this to warp, honestly. Because all I wanted to do is get this one word where he's saying down. So I brought my start point, this little start flag. I'm moving that there. And if I play the clip. Down. Okay, that's the word down. I wanna take the end arrow here and move this up so I don't get the rest of what he's saying. And it's just gonna be the word down. Down down now you see down every time i trigger it's waiting down for the next bar down to play it now that's not what i want i want this particular clip to be triggered maybe let's say every let's say every 16th note why not and i think it'd be cool if this clip was transposed down now keep in mind this is not warped so when i'm changing the pitch if i make the pitch lower it's also going to make this play uh slower Okay, think of it like slowing down a record. But now I can trigger it a lot more often. Let me zoom in here and I'm gonna move my start point so that it's a bit closer to the beginning so we don't have a gap when I'm playing it. Okay, there we go. So let's play our drums and let's get our little percussion going and just see how this all works in practice. So there you go. Something else that we can do with our audio clips, they don't all have to be loops. You can import one-shot samples. A one-shot sample means that it plays once and it doesn't loop. And by changing the clip launch quantization on that one clip, you can play that a lot more freely, a lot more loose, and make it feel like you're really playing live and not just pressing play on a bunch of loops.